They need cola tanks to stop them from burning out. Because when they take out your home, when they take out you, like they did in Paradise, because Paradise was an EMP test, it was either accidental or it was actually a testing ground. It was a testing ground to see how quickly, how fast it could take EMP and how they could take those buildings out and incinerate. I don't know the reports anything on 20,000 or 100,000 people have just been cremated. There's nothing left of them. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Radio 5G. This is Michael Henry Dunn with my co-host, Nancy L. Hopkins. And Radio 5G is a joint production of Cosmic Reality Radio and the Sacred Academy of Geoenergetics, acronym SAGE, here in Crestone, Colorado. And uh, we are very glad to have back with us today uh, our good friend Mark Steele uh, from the U.K., who is going to share with us today um, a lot of develop- developments that are both encouraging and uh, really hard to hear about at the same time, because this is a pretty serious fight we've got on our hands. There's a mass awakening uh, to this 5G. They have absolutely overstepped the mark. I'm getting contact from the US, Australia, um, all over the continent. Uh, people are starting to wake up to this, and it's becoming very, very busy, uh, where I'm spending lots of time talking to people and talking to activists from around the country, but there's lots. We actually in the UK now have got hundreds of groups setting up uh, in towns, villages, cities, right across the country. In fact, the mainstream media, believe it or not, uh, they are starting to cover this, not in exactly the uh, outrageous technology that it is, but they're still starting to cover it as a is a health risk instead of, you know, all of the mainstream media were covering it as a security risk. We're starting to see, it was in the Bristol Live News, it was in the Leeds Live News. These are online um, uh, groups, media groups, where they're talking about the health effects, the detrimental health effects, and that there's no research to show that this stuff's safe. Well, there's never going to be any any data to show that 5G is safe because 5G was developed as a weapon system. Anybody that thinks it's going to be safe or there's any test that would ever even believe it to be safe, have got something either wrong with them if they know the technology or they're just deceivers and, uh, you know, not being genuine about, uh, you know, basically trying to deflect people from the reality of what 5G is or, or they just don't know. So anybody that knows anything about 5G knows that it's very, very dangerous. It has to be. It was developed by the world's military as a weapon. Killed quite a lot of people. In fact, I know a couple of US ambassadors in the Moscow embassy weren't very well. And they died. Developed themselves leukemia from a pulse frequency from a two and a half gigahertz weapon system. That's the same weapon system, by the way, that you've got in your home. That's the same Wi-Fi that your technology companies can come into your home and change the parameters of the Wi-Fi in your home and weaponize it on top of you. Uh, yes, at that time. Remember, we're, we're talking about the 70s, okay? See, the thing of it is, because I didn't know about the, the pre... I, I thought, okay, they've just started this up because the reason that I even have any comprehension of it, I was in electronic warfare, and I knew what we could do. Okay, so I'm I'm assuming. Okay, I'm seeing all this microwave radiation. I'm going. I I bet they've done exactly what we do, which was highly, highly classified. I mean, this went beyond top secret because there is so much collusion throughout the system. You know, for some people, the Soviets slash Russians are your ultimate enemy. For other people, it's like let's tell them they're the enemy and keep them going. <laughs> You know, so oh, right because we need the game to run the military industrial complex profits. Right, because when they went back, and I specifically <clears throat> told them, tell NSA to look for microwave. Okay, so that when the NSA went in, they knew exactly the frequencies they had to look for, and they found it. Well, as long as we're talking about this, you know, about the military applications, the surveillance applications of millimeter microwave technology and and 5g you know there there are of course 
now in the public domain, patents that were applied for decades ago around this kind of technology, which was specifically um, for thought control, mind control, to influ influence brain waves. Um, to what extent, and I know there's, there's stuff Mark needs to share with us about um, what's going on in the UK. I, d I don't want to delay that, but as long as we're on this topic, um, is there... You know, are there traceable direct effects of of what is being put in place now with the 5G rollout that we can legitimately raise the concern of not just a surveillance system, not just a weaponized system, which we know it, it can um, burn and kill, but <laughs> but also um, a, a brain control thought influencing system. Do we have do we have solid information to share on that? I've seen bits and pieces here and there about you know patents that exist. Um, is there something we can bring out and share right now um, with this other than just speculation um, on five G in that regard? Well, maybe Mark knows more about specifics, but um, I can tell you they're doing it simply because if <laughs> the science has been there for so long. You know, you, you hear about the science and you don't see it uh, applied, and you have to be watching for this. I mean, one of, the, one of the telltale signs that I would watch for as an intelligence officer spying on the Soviet Union, okay, was to go back and look at technical scientific magazines and and. and discussions of what theoretically they thought they could do and then to watch and see when this drops off because what would happen is that scientists get together and they go oh wow you know if you use this microwave thing you can control people's minds okay so they all start discussing it they do a little science on it and then all of a sudden it goes dead silent as soon as you see dead silent you know that the state of the soviet <laughs> union was taking over the information all right, and so now you go, okay, they're trying to make this real. And so I think the same thing can be said. We know there's all these patents and everything, and but, you know, boom, all of a sudden it goes, you know, semi-silent, and then it comes back up because people find the patents. But I guarantee you this is part, a, part and parcel of what they're attempting to do is to control, not, not necessarily come out and kill initially, but to control. On a scientific level, where you have all these CIA bureaucrats in a room, and this is a very, you know, dry, dull sort of meeting, and this one fellow is presenting some findings regarding um, either a chemical element that could be put into an aerosol spray that could conceivably be sprayed over a population, and that they found that this element or combination of chemicals could actually have a, a genetic effect. They were proposing to possibly spray this over the Middle East because they, they found a way to access the genetic code that actually hardwires the human being to seek higher reality, to seek meaning, transcendence, basically to seek God. And they said, hey, you know, we found a way to actually switch that off. Wouldn't it be great if we could turn all these Muslim fundamentalists who are all, you know, crazy about God, we could just switch that off and sort of dumb down their, their impulse to seek the divine. Well, you know, they're probably not going to confine that to just the Middle East and Muslims, though, of course, Muslims are also, you know, um, a very large population in Indonesia and India, etc. But um, do you think that they would confine that technology and say, well, let's keep our own population, you know, safely away from the God thing as well, because in the long run, without actually naming it as such, they could say that's really not in line with our agenda and our design for Americans. That particular subject, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fake narrative. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I can pretty dispel the, the 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 narrative. What actually happened? You can't sell to the security service any military organisation that you're going to wipe out all of that population. So you've got to give them something to go off. You've got to be able to tell them that this is actually a control. Let's control the masses. Let's spy on them. Let's control them because that's what you see on the tin. 
I, can, I know this technology really well, and that's what it's able to do. It's battlefield interrogation. And the reason why the telecoms companies are currently using sub-gigahertz is it's an urban environment, uh, long-range radar piece of equipment. So, But he has the rope. He has the bit where it gets really interesting. The mainstream narrative state that you've got to have these transmitters every few houses because higher frequency, that's what they're telling us. It's higher frequency, so they've got to be closer. So we need lots, 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 billions more of them, like every couple of homes. We need them every couple of homes because it doesn't travel very well. It is a crock. It's a fabrication. Reason for that, it's a kill grid. It's a weapon. And it's yet a mass kill. The population of the US here the West. If you look at the capacity of the equipment, I have 31,875 streetlights in a small, stinky little town called Gateshead. That's obviously run by a load of Luciferian devil worshippers. Now, I say that because obviously there is, uh, they've got history here, you know, a bit of uh, Luciferian worship, etc., and obviously, if you want to control groups, those circles can be very, very interesting. A lot of it in the military here, you know, in, the, in this military intelligence, a lot of spiritual ality, uh, basically on the devil's side. Because some of the things these people have to do, you've really got to be a devil. You've got to be a monster to be able to, you know, the sexual perversions against children and all about the traffic and stuff like that. And they obviously have to acquiesce to that because with the intelligence equipment we've got globally, very easy to track these child traffickers, but obviously somebody just doesn't want to because there's another agenda. But the 31,875 streetlight fitments, each one, a normal, let's see if I was to buy off the shelf a board that was to switch a light on and off, you probably need something in a region, three and a half let run volts, 12 volts, you know, a nice cheap board, something you buy for about 50 pence. You buy them off the shelf in China, go to Shenzhen, you get somebody build a one for you. What I wouldn't do is build a board with a 450 volt capacitor attached to it. So we've got 31,875 boards with a high gain dielectric lens with a 450 volt capacity. It's an EMP, it's an electromagnetic pulse weapon. It's just one of its weaponized parts, because obviously it can shoot you as well. It can target a choir and shoot. It's quite a bit of sophisticated equipment. What it's not capable of doing is switching the lights on and off. That's why the lights are on all over. So the agenda, see, how do you sell to your local intelligence agents the fact that you're going to murder everybody? Well, they wouldn't go for that, would they? It's very unpalatable. You'd have to get a pretty spooky type of guy to want to go for that. Maybe he's only a devil worshipper. But the the capacity of the equipment here to kill, it is not yet a spy. That is a myth. The control grid is not true. I'm looking at the technology. I'm looking at the capacity. The MIMO tanks have got cooler tanks. They're going to pour that much energy into them. They need cooler tanks to stop them from burning out. Because when they take out your home, when they take out you, like they did in Paradise, because Paradise was an EMP test, it was either accidental or it was actually a testing ground. It was a testing ground to see how quickly, how fast they could take EMP and how they could take those buildings out and incinerate. I don't know the reports, anything on 20,000 or 100,000 people have just been cremated. There's nothing left of them. So what's Mark, really Mark, can, Mark, can we just slow down here for one second? Because I really would like you to explain, just sort of like think about paradise and tell the people step by step what happened there. Can you do that? Because I think if they can yeah. understand what already happened, let's use it as an example of what can happen. Right. Well, par- paradise was one of two things. It was either an accidental EMP or it was a deliberate EMP. I'm not really sure because I didn't pull the trigger. Now, what I mean by that, if we're, we're energy companies coming in up to people's properties and fitting smart meters, all of these smart meters have an overcapacity potential. They have massive potential to pour significant amounts of microwave radiation 
into your home. It's what's called overburden. So that by the time I fill your home with your smart TV, your deck phone, your Wi-Fi, and let's say I just come in remotely, all of these devices can be activated remotely. They can come in, they can switch them on. You switch them off, I can switch them back on remotely. So I can come into your home and I can switch all them on, I can turn them all up all at the same time. And then if I have a an over charge, an over burden, or I want to set off a, a, an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, then I'll just incinerate you and your home. So and how that happens, you've obviously you built your home up into this microwave pulse and primed building where all the hydrocarbon, you know, your plasterboard, your timber, you, you know, you're basically a 99% water. So I'm basically just, you know, charging you up. And then when you're pulling over an EMP, you just vaporize. And that's the images. If you look at the uh, images in paradise. Wait, 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 one second. I want that to be very clearly understood. He said the word, you will be vaporized. That means you're going to go poof disappear now let me just stop you here so that people can understand why again i'm going back into history i was explained to me uh, a system back in 1976 that it was an electromagnetic pulse and if it was completely in sync with your body what would happen was it would disrupt, jam your system to, to a degree that the molecular cohesion of your body would be lost and you would go into a white light flame, boom, gone. And it oh. happened. It, we, we, they actually activated. That's how I know that it happened. So if it's off, if it's not completely focused, well, then you get, you know, deranged in your mind or maybe you'll have a heart attack or something. But by this time, they know exactly the frequency at which the average human body will lose molecular cohesion. So they don't even have to worry about killing you and then having bodies. They just get rid of your body and you in one quick pulse. Dolly. Right. And if I could just point out here when we're talking about, first of all, Paradise, California and the fires there and how an EMP would be used in this way. In case some of our listeners aren't aware, the nature of the fires in Paradise, California, there were many firemen who said, we have never seen fire behave in this way. To you know, There are many instances in which a building not near the trees that were on fire would just suddenly um, implode in flames multiple occasions. And yes, there are certain conditions under which at a certain level of heat, a building will burn, suddenly catch fire so quickly that it looks like that. We're talking veteran firefighters saying they have never seen anything like this and that this appeared to be a targeted energy weapon system that was being tested in uh, in paradise. And you know, we happen to know of someone who uh, has done a lot of research on on the deep state, on the cabal, etc. Who's who had a, a huge amount of research, hard copy research in his home, lived in paradise, and poof, gone. Uh, it was all vaporized. But I just want to touch briefly on the whole EMP thing um, because it's my understanding. You know, people listening to us describe this, listening to the white flash of a dechemicalization of a, a just of the vanishing of a human being in a moment. They're like, well, okay, maybe they can do this, but, you know, how would you possibly get away with this? I mean, just, you know, having people vaporize or disappear, it would be so obvious, people would be so outraged, you know, they could never get away with this. Well, the whole concept of an EMP and how it would be used and the repeated attempts to create a state of martial law through a false flag in this country, and, you know, other countries have used it historically as well. Of course, we know, you know, that Nazi Germany, uh, Kristallnacht, and other historical incidents where deliberate fires and bombs were set to, to blame on the Jews to trigger the Holocaust. The same thing here, where the White House comes out, as it did recently, 
with the whole set of protocols about how the U.S. would survive an EMP. How would we prepare for an EMP? A weaponized electromagnetic pulse, presumably set off by a low level in the atmosphere nuclear explosion or an EMP device that would knock out the satellite system, would knock out, you know, that it would be very um, plausible to once you have done that, suddenly the grids go down, the government declares this was an EMP by a hostile power, be it China or Russia, martial law is declared. At that point, they can take out whoever they want. You know, the the checks and balances of the Constitution are gone. They're mostly gone already, but they're, even the observation of them is gone. The ability to communicate with each other and say, holy crap, they just vaporized my aunt sitting in her, you know, in her rocking chair. That's all gone. And it's at that point, I think, if you're looking at a major depopulation agenda where the puppeteers behind the puppeteers, maybe even the puppeteers behind the puppeteers behind the puppeteers, um, who want to see a global war would be using this. So I just wanted to frame that story for our listeners. Please continue, Mark, with, with your description of of, of how this rolled out, both as a weapon and a uh, uh, an let EMP me, or thought let, control device. Let me let me just go back here for a second to where, where he was, because what he's saying is that when you put these five G devices into your home, you are now com- connected to the five G system, and that five G system is now bombarding you with microwave uh, energy that is actually creating a very unstable situation within your own physical body never mind the structure of your own home and so I I think I'm correct on that Mark and so that's where you were you were explaining that you know it's like they set the bomb and then the the trigger for the explosion is the smart meter is that correct well well either small it can be small meters bring me 5g the 5g what we've got the mini the mini cells and obviously in these mini, these micro cells, sorry, in the street lights, the micro cells in the street lights have got massive overcapacity. I mean, I showed it to a judge in the case when I was in the in the court, when I was actually in the in the witness stand, and the judge, I said to him, Your Honor, I said, that there is a control management system for a light. It operates on 12 volts. I said, in this piece of equipment, this bit of hardware, which looks pretty chunky, pretty heavy duty stuff, I said, this is the uh, the equipment that's fitted in the streetlights in Gateshead. And I says, one is actually uh, what's called a, di- a DEW, direct energy weapon. Because obviously I've got the, the target acquiring antenna. This one's actually got a target acquiring antenna piece of equipment attached to it. So I was explaining that to him. I could see his jaw, <laughs> his jaw marked on. It's the first time, you know, he's probably heard that the local authority have rolled out a weapon system on top of the sitting tree. And, you know, these judges, it's, it's, I think I've had about five judges up there now, and they've all read my skeleton argument, all know what's going on, which is bizarre to say the least. But that's acquiescent in a human rights crime, because that's what 5G most certainly is. I mean, we had some terrible news uh, last night. A young boy, uh, I knew his uh, mother, his mother contacted me about a year ago. Uh, through a through a, a, a friend, a friend asked me about this 5G and whether it would cause uh, strange cancers. And I said, well, it's experimental. It's an 868. We're not really sure. And obviously, the phase the rear radar, so the scanning part of it. I said, we're not really sure what 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 what, what type of cancer. But yeah, I can guarantee we'll have some strange ones. Uh, and we'll definitely have quite a lot of brain cancers, strange brain cancers. You know, not be the normal, you know. Uh, neuro, uh, the glioblastoma from mobile phones. These will be these will be a lot more strange. In which that's what we're starting to see because we've had a couple uh, locally who've had brain cancer. Uh, I just had a report yesterday of a young girl who've had brain cancer. But going back to this young boy, this young boy had uh, developed a very interesting cancer, a heart cancer. So his mother sent me all the details of it. Now I'm not going to mention who they are, what really happened. In relation to that, but I, I, I checked up the cancer, and lo and behold, the cancer was extremely rare, and has only ever been attributed to radar operators. Very, very rare. 
so f- the fact that a five-year-old, well, obviously he was four-year-old at the time, a five-year-old child uh, would develop this type of uh, illness is unbelievable and incontrovertible that it is the streetlight phase de rear, illegal, unlawful, secret rollout of 5G in the gated area. That is most certainly the cause. And that poor little lad died yesterday. My condolences to you, Mark, because I know that your heart must have been involved in, in the family. Um, what 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 he's saying here to, to you it, it, it rings very true with me because when I realized the dangers of all this stuff, it was um, I, I eventually you know, I was out of the military. Well, I wasn't. I was still in the military, but in the reserves. And my brother, who was in the Navy, he came down to Florida because he had to do some Navy work off the coast, and. So I got him to tell me what he was doing, and he was I didn't realize that he was he was working with radars. And I said, whoa. I said, how long have you been working? He says, well, that's what my job is. I work with radars. And I tried to explain to him the problem with radars is that it's the same thing that's in 5G. It's exactly the same thing. It is 5G. Okay, so... Um, because I already knew that in, in secret, secret information, highly classified, that they were seeing um, uh, really weird cancers in radar operators and radar technicians, particularly. Um, so, but this was the military; they kept that all silent. Um, and another thing that they kept silent, Mark, when Vietnam happened and they came out with the first night goggles, okay. Um, yeah. What happened was it was burning the retinas. It was causing yeah. damage into the, in the eyes. And I was the safety officer of the company, and I went to that. I was called to this this meeting, a highly secret meeting, and they're telling us this. And I said, "Well, how do we tell the troops this? How do we tell the people that have been exposed to this that that they're gonna they're gonna have blindness in a few years?" And they said, "Oh no, you can't tell anybody. This is secret." <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, I, that, well, I, well I, yeah, yeah. Well, what I really can't imagine, uh, not, I mean, the same technology was used in the Google Glass. What I cannot understand is how this killer technology, I mean, if I was to build, and I have, have been involved in a number of uh, weapon site systems, we use the 560 nanometers. And the reason why we use that, not that it's 100% safe, it's just far less biologically active than either full spectrum or... Uh, you know, the blue spectrum light. So you obviously use, you use the green spectrum. That's why weapon site systems are <laughs> mainly green because they're less damaging to the, to, the, to the retina. Full spectrum light's pretty damaging. I mean, we did some research where, the, uh, where retinal cells in vitro, where they were tested against these blue LED uh, emitters, we had less than 20% survivability. So you can imagine, and, and I think full spectrum was something like 40% survivability, where green spectrum, the 560 nanometers, was uh, was near 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 fine. You know, slightly sli- slight bit of damage. But you get damage in the retina with any any uh, optical radiation, because obviously optical radiation is a well known classified carcinogen and a hazard. So it's uh, you know the. the so the evidence is, was definitely there, but it's interesting what you're saying. So how do, how do we get to the point where we've got gaming headsets that large technology companies are rolling out en masse across the whole population, offering for children to test in schools uh, using pulse modulated full spectrum microwave, <coughs> sorry, terahertz range uh, pulse modulated light, which is I mean, makes microwaves look like uh, something that's uh, not that dangerous, believe it or not, especially when you focus them through a magnifying glass onto a child's retina. It's pretty bizarre. It's probably the reason why they brought 5G out to kill everybody before their children die of eye cancer. But anyway, that's another story. So we've got children being harmed. We've got children getting brain cancer. We've got children dying. All on the back of someone's idea that I think it's a good idea to spy on us. Um, Mark, let me let, let me ask you about 
um, the brain cancer in a child, which was a rare form of cancer previously associated with radar operators, right? Well, that was a um, so. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, how can we share this on a solid basis with like epidemiological evidence of proximity to either one of the LED street lamps or a small cell tower in Gateshead? How can we establish, you know, an evidentiary connection that can't be dismissed as like, oh, yeah, those people on, you know, they're, they're 5G activists making wacky, um, you know, connections and, and yeah. theories. Um, because obviously this, you know, the, the link to a very rare form of cancer associated with radar operators, that's big, you know, in a community in which um, 5G has just been rolled out. That, you know, can we... Because I'd love to go, you know, more public with this, and we always need to yeah. be careful. Often, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. we are lured out to to be exposed, you know, um, with going out there with slightly inaccurate information. They nail you. They destroy your credibility. They say, oh, "Look at what these wild claims they're making," and there's no basis because of this and that. I'd love to be able to, you know, if this is, you know, obviously this sounds quite real and substantial and I'd love to be able to just go out there with it with high confidence um, you know with some some evidence that that would hold up in court or hold up with uh, epidemiological studies yeah. what do you have any thoughts on that well before we well, do we... that before we do that let's just get a time frame I asked you earlier before we get on the show when do they put the lights in in Gateshead we the the first knowledge I had of them the one the start of the rollout sometime in 2013 212 213 but what they did they fitted the street light and it was to the main highways now obviously the main highways are a lot higher up so the 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 and the the directional antennas would scan over the top of most homes yeah you'd have to be at a pretty long distance away. You know, maybe 15 or 20 mile away for that for that rear to come to basically hit hit a home, obviously with a slight curvature. So the 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 the, the first rollout was uh, the main highways they were very very high up the the lamps you know well above the height of a home. And then when I've, I believe that was either 213 214 they started putting the lights. In the streets, well, there was a lot lower down. In fact, the directional, that directly opposite people's bedrooms, bedroom windows. It wasn't until 2016, September 2016, when they rocked up outside of my home. And obviously, I already knew that the LED streetlights weren't exactly safe, but I've got blackout blinds. Um, nobody's been warned about that either. And... Uh, the rock up with these LED streetlights that looked a bit unsafe. And then I had neighbours knocking on doors telling us about nosebleeds. So that's basically the time frame. So 216 was, you know, my factual evidence when I knew that they'd roll this stuff out. It did. It took me till it was about mid-2017 when I had one of these, uh, these transmitters thrown at me by one of their... Um, their lighting guys. What actually happened? I was coming down the street and I said to the chap, "What are you doing up there?" Because obviously, been a lot of them being destroyed where I lived. I don't know why. Anyway, come back this night in the afternoon, and there was a lighting guy, and he was fixing the light. And I, I explained to him, I said, "Look, that will kill a baby. They are murdering babies. That transmitter is illegal." Anyway, he said something along the lines of, "I've been fitting them for ten years. You don't know what you're talking about." Well, I then knew he was a liar because he hadn't been fitting them for 10 years. That wasn't true. And obviously, I'm not really keen on people that tell lies. So I had a bit shouted at him. Anyway, he ended up throwing this thing at me. Uh, and that's when I uh, really had a good look at it and realised, I mean, I already had the technical data from the manufacturer, so I had a rough idea. But in the, in the technical manufacturer, they didn't talk about the antenna design, the high gain antenna design. In fact, the whole technical sort of uh, document that come with a product was false. It was a falsification of what was actually in the light system. Because uh, obviously what was actually in the light system was a target acquiring weapon system. Uh, and I then took that 
couldn't believe me eyes. I really just couldn't believe what I was looking at. Okay, now let's just, let's just make sure that everybody understands what you were looking at. You had, had, you had already gotten the manufacturer's specs for this device, and then this guy, sent by God, threw you the device. And you get the device, and you compare it to the spec sheet, and you realize that this spec sheet is a bunch of crap, and that this is actually a weapon system. It has nothing to do with telecommunications, correct? Absolutely. The, the, the port, it, they had actually applied for Part 15 FCC approval for the antenna, and obviously this one was a high gain. Well, it, it, that would normally apply to a dipole antenna, and it most certainly wouldn't apply to a 25 milliwatt transmitter. And obviously we were measuring radiation in people's bedrooms. You know, Part 15 FCC, I think it's about 50 metres. It can be no more than 5 milliwatt. We were, we were uh, millivolts, sorry, we were measuring, we were actually measuring in people's bedrooms 800, 4,000 millivolts. And a part 15 FCC at 30 metres should be no more than five. Otherwise, it fails. So, in, but that was just, all. It, it was just confirmation of the antenna design and how this antenna can focus a signal. And obviously, that's what it was doing. It was sweep, sweeping the area with a scanner. Uh, it was scanning the area with this sub, and the reason for the sub gigahertz, and that's why people have to understand: do not, do not, do your own research. Do not believe the mainstream narrative. The higher frequencies, the 30 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz. I'm telling you now, doesn't travel in air. I can gas you with it. I can make it. I can make a gas chamber with it and gas you with it, but it's not going to travel in air. So that's the equipment they're rolling out in America. They're currently putting out uh, these reactors to gas people at 60 gigahertz because it doesn't serve any other purpose. You can't get a telecommunications signal up at 60 gigahertz. I mean, how do you do that? It's just, I mean, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy what we're talking about. That's Let me ask you something. Of- yeah, uh, Mark, excuse me for interrupting. Uh, yeah. You brought up a point earlier that I'd like to go into a little bit. You were talking about how... The mainstream narrative in the media is that there needs to be, you know, a small cell tower every couple of blocks because millimeter microwave doesn't, you know, it's a short wave. It's not like you can do it from one hilltop to another 10 miles away. But you were saying that possibly in concert with the low level satellite um, network being rolled out, 20,000 low level satellites across the planet. Or I wasn't quite sure, but it it seemed as if you were saying that that for five G to go on online with the potentially deadly effect, surveillance effect, that you know, brain effect that we're talking about, it doesn't necessarily need to be that close. That you know, we've got all of us looking for small cell towers going up every couple of blocks. Um, you know, this has been very much part of the narrative that I've been sharing with people because I thought that was a basic aspect of the technology. Exactly. Yeah. And and you, are you saying now that it potentially is not, and that they no, could do it? Not. Yeah, it's definitely not. The the sub gigahertz range, the, these small these small micro cells are operating in the sub gigahertz range, and the reason why they're doing that is because it's urban air, it's urban environment radar sub gigahertz long range radar operates mainly in the sub-gigahertz range. I mean, the weaponry, weapon systems, the sweet spot for weapon systems is about 10 10 megahertz up to about 10 gigahertz. That's your real sweet spot. You get over there, you you know, you get a bit too high, then it's not going to be much good to you. But the the real sweet spot, you see, for your target acquiring, if I want to look into the urban environment, it's got to be, it doesn't have to be sub-gigahertz, but once you get beyond the sub-gigahertz range, you start to get attenuation in there, you start to get it blocked by concrete and brickwork. Well, if I want to look into your home, if I want to see what's under your bed, if I want to see you having uh, relationships in your home and spy on you, I need sub-gigahertz signal. And that's in these these microcells are operating on the sub-gig and that turn around saying they need lots of them, lots of them, they need only a couple of houses because... They, they're doing travel well in air. Well, I'm going to tell you, they travel pretty well in air. It's long-range radar. I mean, these signals have traveled 3,000 miles. 
Uh, that, you know, these travel within the urban environment, the built up urban environment, 15 to 20 to 30 mile. And the built up, I'm talking about going through lots of reinforced concrete here, by the way, in a cityscape. So let's say if I've got a 20 or 30,000 of these, I can blanket coverage, 3D map, a whole cityscape with a class so- one cancer causing radiation. But that's just so I can spy on you. That's not what this is for. Okay, Mark, just let me stop here for a second because I want to get people a visual picture of what you're talking about. Most people now are familiar with the LIDAR concept that you've got a laser in a plane flying over dense jungle that can see through the jungle to see what's on the ground. Yeah. All right, that's the same kind of technology, only it's being directed so that it can see through concrete, not just trees and foliage, but concrete and wood and everything else that might protect you from being... They can watch you walking around your house. Absolutely. I've got a, do you want a picture? I've got a picture. Yes, I know, and that's. I was. I, I realized that it's easier to explain what they oh. might have seen. And I've it's a the LIDAR images. they've seen, you know? Yeah, I've got the images... The, uh, but this 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 shows you the deception, the deceit, the dishonesty of these organisations. Because you see, that's the mainstream narrative. Babes. We need lots of them because they don't travel very well. It is absolute garbage. They travel with these in the urban environment. These sub gigahertz signals. So you've got to ask yourself the question: Why do they want one every couple of houses? The reason why. Because it's an EMP. If you take the equipment to bits and have a look at the capacity of it, you'll see it's got this massive potential for an electromagnetic pulse. Now, obviously, if I then fill your home with all of the other equipment, your smart meter, you know, the one I can turn up at ease, your smart fridge, I can come in in the middle of the night and turn that up, and I can also come in and I can turn your Wi-Fi up and not only that, I can change the pulse modulation. So I can change the pulse modulation and the frequencies that you were talking about before I can start to disassociate the molecular bonds and then you fire the other bird and boom, you no, no need to bury anybody. I mean, what a fantastic weapon. This is the greatest weapon of all time, right? I'll tell you why. You're paying for it. So you pay for your own death and they don't even have to come and dig a hole to bury you. Let me ask you something. Excuse me, Mark. Let me ask you something. When you're talking sub gigahertz range, what exactly uh, does that mean in terms of numbers? Like 2.5 gigahertz uh, is what? um, Well, anything under a gig, anything in under a gigahertz, right, is sub gigahertz. And if you look at the industry standard, what actually happened at first, uh, Michael, I was telling people that 5G was sub gig. And everybody said, doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a lunatic, conspiracy theorist. He's making it up. We now know that the industry have admitted that 5G is sub-gigahertz. 700 megahertz to 900 megahertz is, the, is their sweet spot. So that's the industry. That's what they're saying. I think the US, it's about 700. It's 800 in the UK. And I think they've got the... They've got the 900 uh, spectrum in Europe. Quite interesting. That, that could be uh, another very interesting aspect, the fact that they've actually changed the, the part of the spectrum to different parts of the world. Uh, well, let, let me share with you a piece of news that came out yesterday, and this is regarding the FCC. Um, I shared this with you, Nancy. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it yet. This is from an industry magazine called Engadget. So this isn't an activist piece of news. This isn't somebody trying to alert everybody to how dangerous 5G is. This is a telecommunications industry publication uh, just keeping us all up to date on the wonderful rollout of the 5G system. Headline on this article is FCC chairman wants to open mid-band airwaves for 5G. They'll vote on this in July. Let me just read a little bit of this to you. This may be relevant. It may not, but it, it sounds like it probably could be. Here's the article. U.S. carriers have mostly rolled out 5G on high frequencies with upcoming auctions aiming even higher. 
Unfortunately, these choices create problems. The implementations typically don't work well indoors, and they risk interfering with weather forecasts and other tasks that might depend on high bands. So the FCC might provide some much-needed breathing room in lower-spectrum slices. However, the FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, has circulated an order that, if approved, would open 2.5 gigahertz airwaves for 5G. Uh, this spectrum was set aside in the 1960s with services like educational TV in mind, but a large part of it has gone unused for decades, according to uh, the FCC chairman. This would make use of mid-band wireless and would theoretically allow both incumbents and relative newcomers to claim frequencies they didn't have before. So they're looking to finalize the details of a December auction of 37 gigahertz, 39 gigahertz, and 47 gigahertz bands as part of their broader 5G fast plan that would aim to speed up deployment of the uh, of the wireless data. Um, is this relevant, Mark? Well, it, it it's definitely relevant, but I mean, you've got to remember these are masks. These are masks as a deception. I mean, you only have to look at Telestra, Telenza. Go and have a look at their website and what it tells you. The bit of equipment that fit on the top of the street light and is uh, designed to look like a light sensor. Now, ask yourself this question. If 5G is safe, why do the manufacturers want to make the bits to look like something else? Why do the, why do the manufacturers want to go to all the trouble to design equipment that looks like something that it isn't? It's a bit like the, uh, you know, the, the, the connectors, you know, electronic connectors, they're like a lobe thing. There's a company in South America, they make 5G antennas to sit inside them to make them look like they're just a... A telecoms, a normal telecoms potted connector, so, and you can hang them on the side of telegraph poles, and nobody be none the wiser. So, it, why are why are companies across the world, telecoms companies, going to all the trouble of designing that equipment to look like something? Are they be proud of 5G, or they're not proud of it, or does it does it actually mean there's something a lot more sinister in relation to the rollout? Well, what I'm going to tell people, 5G is a weapon. In all of its technical parameters, I'll explain them to people today. 5G is a widening out of the spectrum in the lower part of the uh, spectrum as well as the higher part of the spectrum. Both are just as dangerous. The higher frequencies don't penetrate walls as well. The sub gigs do. So if I've got a cross, if I've actually got a 30 gigahertz emitter, right, and I've also got a sub gigahertz frequency emitter i can penetrate your home with ease because i've already penetrated the wall with a sub gig do you do you know what i mean i've already resonated the frequency in your in your concrete wall with a sub gigahertz frequency so i can break through now oh, okay oh, okay i gotta stop you here i gotta stop you here so you're saying that the sub gigahertz, meaning that it's if you see one gigahertz, that's gigahertz above. Sub is anything below one gigahertz. When you, yeah. gigahertz, when you when you put a one gigahertz on a concrete wall, that wall begins to disintegrate because it's losing its molecular cohesion. Correct. Yes, yeah. correct. So this is absolutely without any equivocation a de- 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 definition of a direct energy weapon. This is exactly what brought down the Twin Towers on 9-11. Of course it is. <laughs> My God, I didn't know what frequency, Mark. I'm going, how the hell did they do that? I knew what they had done, but it was like, what frequency? It's exactly. the, it's the sub-gigahertz frequencies, ladies and gentlemen. The smaller you get, the more you're, you're resonating with the molecular of concrete. Never mind what it's doing to your body. But you're, you're, and that's why you're saying that the integrity, integrity of the nuclear power plants is failing because of the sub-gigahertz destroying the concrete walls and foundation that are protecting the reactors. Let us explain what 5G is first, Michael, right, for everybody out there. 5G's first technical parameter means more. doesn't matter what it is. A lot more of it is 5G. And the reason that's why it's a weapon, because obviously we already know that the small amount that we've had with a 4G rollout has killed quite a lot of people, a lot of people sick. 
So 5G is billions more, billions more antennas, billions more close proximity antennas. Doesn't matter what they operate. I had an argument with a guy down in London. Uh, they're doing this uh, telecare. All the equipment, all the hardware is 2G, 3G. The 2G, 3G boards, the, the whole equipment platform is all in that spectrum. Yeah, it's all it's all older equipment. Hasn't got the high key and dielectric lens antennas, which is specific to 5G, by the way. Anyway, the guy's telling me it's not 5G. I said, listen, it's 5G. They're putting it on the people's chimney breasts and putting it in their roofs for a telecare. It's all part of the 5G weapon because the 5G is all about filling the environment with as much microwave radiation as possible. Because like I said, 5G's got nothing to do with telecommunications. 5G is a weapon. So the more I put into an environment, no matter what it is, that's why, and this isn't me saying this, you know, I mean, Ofcom, Ofcom and the European Union have identified 5G as... 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, as long as it hits the main technical parameter, which is densification. Weapon. The more you get, the more you die. All right? But this is where it's really interesting, because if you look at the overcapacity of the equipment that are fit into the street lighting and the smart meter grid, and the smart grid, the capacity of the equipment to be used as a weapon, it's all there. One of the things that's pretty interesting, I think what happened in Paradise, obviously, whether it was a test or it was accidental, the, the equipment, there was a burnout at the power stations at the Transformers. It was the same when they tested it in South Korea. They had a burnout at the, uh, at the Transformers. They had a burnout in the electrical equipment because this stuff will burn out your normal infrastructure. And this is the reason for electric cars. Because you know electric cars don't make any economic sense. Don't make any sense at all in any way, shape or form. In fact, pretty toxic, pretty toxic to the environment, very toxic to humans who drive them if you drive them for any more than 30 minutes. In fact, I wouldn't let your driver one at all because the magnetic flux in the cabin is pretty high. And if you're traveling at speed and also you're changing the speed, so you've got that oscillation of speed, that's not very good for the body at all. So bad head, sore eyes, and, you know, and that'll kill you. That'll make sure you buy something like recall. That'll make sure you don't get your pension. Mark, we right? love Mark, what? Mark, Mark. You, 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 you're on cars now. We need to get back to paradise and what you were talking about the substation. No, no, well, see where the where the paradise the paradise uh, attack. Now it may have been an accident. It may not have been an accident, but whatever it was, it was an EMP. And you can tell that by the, 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 the disappearance of the people. Obviously, there's reports of lots and lots of people where they just disappeared. Uh, and the buildings, the state of the buildings, how the buildings were basically burned to the ground very, very quickly. Ferocious fires. That's always a thing to look out for. Because obviously, if you get an ignition and the, and the fire's ferocious, Grenfell Tower was a very good ferocious fire. And obviously, there was lots of question marks about the lack of bodies, which tells you that it was potentially uh, an EMP, could have been a test. Quite interestingly enough, Grenfell Tower just had a new type of smart meter fitted. Uh, The previous smart meter didn't work very well and had been setting fire to all of the appliances in the place. That was something that kept out of the mainstream media. In fact, it was so bad, the council had actually had to pay the uh, residents an ex gratia payment. I think they got £170 or £270 pound each because their equipment in their homes was bursting into flames. Pretty interesting uh, bit of information and something that was totally kept out of the media, something that was well documented and still, for some inexplicable reason, never got aired again when the fire actually uh, took hold. And obviously, we've seen the catastrophe that happened. There's recently, just a couple of weeks ago, we've had another fire in London. And when I looked at the pictures, the pictures are really telling because you can see the buildings gassing off. So the, f- the flames are actually on the outside of the building and the building's not on fire. The 
building itself is on fire, but the building's gassing off. So the where the obviously you get the right oxygen mix with over the with whatever hydrocarbon gas has been broken down and coming off the building, and then you see this wall of fire, this absolute wall of fire. But you can see the fabric of the building. So it's not where you know if you watch a normal fire, you see the fire bursting up through the you know through the windows and going up the wall. And basically, it's at the top of the it's at the top of the ceiling, and it comes up through the window and then goes up the wall. And that's why we're seeing these fires that firemen have never seen before. They're inexplicable. Mark, yeah. Mark. Let me ask you, let me, let, let me ask you, Mark, um, exactly the point you're making. They're not rolling out 5G and turning off 3G and 4G. It's a layer cake of more toxic Wi-Fi. It is a densification. It is cumulative. And oh, by the way, 5G is not going to improve your cell phone reception. You get a lot of people going, oh, yeah, bring it on. You know, I can barely, you know, hear, you know, in my area and the reception so bad on my cell phone. It's data carrying. It's not about getting better, um, you know, cell phone voice reception, right? But but this this issue of densification being the key factor whereby we can know, you know, that, that 5G is being rolled out. Is the rollout of the satellite network going to effectively blanket all of us in 5G with or without small cell towers every few hundred yards? Is that what you're saying? Right. Well, the, 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 the issue that you have, the issue that you have, the satellites in air are basically a mirror system. You know, the, I mean, you do get some satellites that have got uh, quite a bit of energy, but not nowhere near powered up enough to be able to be dangerous to people on the ground. The, what you do, you use them as a... Um, is it is a you've got a ground based uh, weapon? If you're going to use them as a weapon, you get a ground based weapon. It's basically just a mirror in the sky, and you can then it's it's how they, they develop them for uh, tracking in ICBMs. I mean that's the whole point of uh, satellites, it's so you can actually take a, a weapon system over somebody else's territory and drop it on them, because obviously they're not going to let you put a ground radar to track anything in. So you've got to put it in the air. So that was the whole point of satellites. Uh, and these satellites, I mean, obviously, in the sub-gigahertz range, you've got quite a bit of distance there. So the weapon can be pretty potent uh, in that because it doesn't attenuate in there very well. And so you can, you've got quite a, quite a heavy punch. So these ground arrays, these massive ground arrays, arrays um, have the potential to be used as over the rising weapon systems where they're reflected off these satellites in the sky, take anybody out anywhere in the world, take a take a take a building out, take a military base out, you know, take take something out. I mean, yeah, that's, uh, so nobody's safe. I mean, everybody's got to understand. 5G is an existential threat. To everything. Okay, well, okay. Wait, 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 let, me, let me just stop you here for a second again. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I, I, the yeah. details. I need the details. All right. So what we're saying here now is that considering it a weapon system, that the satellites are not um, active agents. They are simply reflectors, correct? Well, in most, I haven't, to be honest, I, I haven't, Nancy, I haven't seen them. I'd have to see the design to see what the potential of them is. But okay. most, satellites in the, most satellites that are actually in the sky are basically a reflector from a ground-based system. Well, that, you know, I mean, I know enough to, to say to myself, the satellite system isn't fitting the mold. It's not com complying with what I think should be happening with the satellite system because they're so small. And, you know, if you're just using it as a relay point, all it is is a relay point. And what you're saying is that it is not, it, it, as well as being something that can control your local population, you can actually use the satellite systems because there's 20,000 of them. See, when you want to target something, you need multiple points of reference to get an exact target, targeting done. So you need a lot of these satellites. This is what's making sense to me now. It's a targeting system. So you have the, you have, you have, you have the ground station. That is now, and yes, sometimes people, uh, there was a, a court case in Sprint and somebody else, Sprint and um, Verizon, 
sued AT&T because they were talking about their new 5G system. And, in fact, it was 4G improved. Okay, yeah. and so you've got that kind of malarkey confusion happening. Um, but this concept turns it around. Instead of being afraid, Michael, that the satellites, once they become active, that their 5G potential, because I'm going like, there's no way the millimeter is, is going to travel from space and with any, I mean, it was just like inconceivable it to me. It, it just won't travel. It won't travel. Uh, you've got to have sub gigahertz to travel long distance, and that's why I knew. See, when I first came across the 5G in Gateshead, as soon as I read, because when I first found out it was sub gigahertz, I was like scratching my head thinking, well, hang on a minute, what is it? What do they want to cheeky? And I thought the cheeky swines, they're using it to scan, like an urban scanner, like a radar urban scanner. And it wasn't until I got my hands on one that I realized what it really was, which was even more outrageous, the fact that your government thinks it can roll a, 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 a weapon system out on top of you. And I haven't even de- they haven't had the decency to declare war on you. So it's a secret war that they haven't told you. They've took you along to a fight, and they haven't even told you. That's a bit of a, that's a bit cheeky. I mean, that's a bit of a coward's, that's a coward's uh, uh, way to uh, go on. It's not British at all. I mean, at least we used to go and wave our flags and dress up for a fight. I mean, these lot have come through the back door, and that shows you the type of devilish, Luciferian characters we're dealing with. These are devious. And it, but it also show, shows you the can't face the fight. Can't face the fight. We've got to do it backhand. We've got to do it behind the scenes. It's all secret. It's all let's all just kill these lot off. Let's get them sick. Let's make them ill. I must be. I'll tell you now. They must be absolutely past themselves because we know, and we are four years too early. The bit I wanted to talk about, the cars before, the cars are part of the weapon system. And the reason for that, they need localised power packs. Because obviously when you're firing the EMP, you've got a good chance of taking out the power grid. If you take down the power grid, then obviously you need something to carry on. Because what they want to do, it's no good killing half a million people and leaving half a million left. I mean, people go absolutely bonkers, especially in America, because you guys are all, you know, tooled up to the up to the teeth, that wouldn't be very good at all. So if you're going to pull an EMP, you need to kill everybody. Don't need any. Don't leave anybody alive. All right. It's probably one of the reasons why Trump's been upset with the Chinese and his 5G because he's realised exactly what it is. He's been watching some of my videos, I'm sure. Anyway, the uh, the reality of it is they've got to kill everything. Because you cannot leave, you know, I spoke to a guy the other day about this Agenda 21 and it's all about, there's going to be 500 million left, it's all about this depopulation. What an absolute load of crock. Can you imagine, you're the controller, I'm the person who's just wiped out the vast majority of the world's biology and human life, all right? I'm going to leave 500 million people left. What if the turn on us? Now, there's a potential problem. Now, what they're starting to talk about is the health problems. And obviously, wants to start to understand that this technology is experimental. It has never been tested to be safe. It is a research project in breach of the Nuremberg Code. That's when we'll start to see some real feathers start to fly. So what's happening in the UK is fantastic. But I want to go back to what you said before, Michael. We've got children in schools now, young girls in schools being sterilized by industrial grade Wi-Fi. Those children will never have babies. Those children will be harmed. That harm will come in the next 10 to 15 years. The gestation from microwave radiation to epidemic to kill could be 15 to 20 years out. We have one of the largest human rights crimes ever being perpetrated on the human race. I believe if there's 500 million of us left by the end of the decade, we'll be lucky. I say that with all confidence in the evidence that I have in relation to the LED streetlights. The blue phosphor coated LED streetlights are a program called Soft Kill. In Barcelona, they've already, there's 20 institutions have done a study in relation to the LED streetlights. They've doubled the breast and the prostate cancer. They've only been in for three years. 
I can tell you that that epidemic is 15 to 20 to 25 year old as it was with smoking. So those people are dying today only after having three years of exposure to that optical radiation, which is absolutely lethal. So I believe there'll be hundreds of millions will die across Europe from that LED street light. In cityscapes across the US where they're using the same technology, I can expect mass population collapse, the sterilization of people where they've been exposed to this Wi-Fi in schools, classrooms. We've already got the evidence of the sperm count collapsing, has done over the last few years. So we'll see population collapse. We will see people being sterilized this equipment was used in the camps to sterilize people. This technology was taken to the USC under Operation Paperclip. The frequencies that are being emitted from your Wi-Fi cause diabetes. Why do you think they pick two and a half gigahertz? People need to wake up and make, make sure that they take action in relation to the crime that's been committed against us. And I'll tell you now, the 500 million that are left will have justice mark well, you, what, what, you, what, what, when when this young man came down the, the little child the four-year-old when he came down with the cancer did you go and did you take measurements did you look to see how far away that antenna was from his from his bedroom i measured i measured obviously i got in touch with the with the mother uh, went down the house i measured the radiation it was a it was a, a constant 1200 to 1400 milli millivolts now, obviously, that's well within IC and IOP guidelines, but it's in breach of the European 216 guidelines. It's in breach of the Council of Europe 1815 resolution, the international courts. It's in breach of the building code regulations and an affront to anybody who thinks that that type of radiation would be safe to a child. It is absolutely deplorable, and that poor boy's dead. He is going to be one of a significant number that will die over the next few years, because like I said, exposure this type of radiation, the potential epidemic is 15 to 20 year out. We survive this, and I believe the numbers will, population numbers will collapse across the West as this epidemic starts to take hold. Got to remember, we've only been exposed to this radiation for, you know, in most part, 10, 10 year. Now we've got the ubiquitous smart meter rollout, which has started aggressively over five years ago. We've got the 5G rollout. So you've got this massive overburden poured out from criminals, from cr criminal enterprise to harm deliberately with intent to harm the citizen. They are well, intending to harm us. The yeah, the other thing. The, yeah, the 305, that's what I keep saying. There are 350 of the world's leading scientists. Devra Davis's group, they, they got signatories. 180 leading scientists wrote for a moratorium on microwave radiation and air. It was ignored. The 350, the 80,000 signatories to, this, to the 5G stop space appeal, ignored, ignored by criminals, ignored by criminals in positions of power, public servants who forgot their role that they, are, they serve us and they are not our masters and they cannot and are not in a position to harm the people. This well, is a what, break yeah, because what's... what I'm seeing happen here is that these local groups are getting together because they start talking to one another. Now, are you seeing the same thing that it's totally grassroots, that you guys at, um, with your organization aren't out there in the streets telling this people to beware? And that it's actually that they're becoming knowledgeable enough to organize themselves. Is and the truth can sometimes be very, very abrasive and very, very, uh, well, not very nice and not palatable. However, this is not going to be easy. The people who are behind it are going to try and do everything they can to carry on with their plan. We have to overcome that, and that's going to take every fiber in my body. They didn't use social media. I mean, they got it, but they went to the streets. They got in front of the telecommunication stores and took and gave people information. That that's where I. That's why I'm so 
firmly convinced that if you just start talking to one another, you're going to find the organization will come together right in your neighborhood, right in your own home, with the people around you. And that's yeah. how that's how it's got to work because just like Mark's saying, we don't we don't have any way of knowing if if they're seeing our five G posts. Small number that's coming through are enough to give people hope that we smash this, we smash this evil. But I've also got to go back to it's very important we know their battle plan. Obviously, you get people who want to do petitions, not on council doors. People have to do more than that. People have to make lots more people aware about what's really happening, and that's how you tackle it. It's always best to know your adversary's battle plan. And if you've got right, so we're at we are at twelve oh three p.m. here in uh, Crestone, Colorado, in the mystical San Luis Valley, and so we're going to wrap up our our program today on Radio Five G. Mark Steele, thank you so much, my friend, for, for your courage and for uh, your time and, and sharing with us here today. And um, thank you all for listening and being with us on Radio 5G. It's um, 5G-K-N-O-W.com, 5G-No.com. Uh, lots of great, great information we're sharing with everybody there. So God bless us, everyone. And Nancy, do you want to say a farewell for us all and, and take us out into the music? Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you so much. Michael, same. And everybody be safe. We'll see you later.